Welcome everyone to another wonderful episode here, Jealous Podiatry. People will be very surprised today because I am performing a permanent chemical matrixectomy procedure for a chronic ingrown toenail. Disclosure. So this is the quintessential example of when, when we perform, when I perform these procedures. The patient already had uh, this problem once before. So, you know, the patient is very active nonetheless, and this is a clear-cut indication of, of when we perform, when I like to perform, you know, perform these permanent procedures, right? It happened once, we put the puzzle together, and then we discuss, you know, short-term versus long-term expectations, and that's why we've decided to perform the, the phenol permanent chemical matrixectomy today. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, we've already put um, the tourniquet is, uh, is on. So without further ado, let's proceed. Come around here. Let's give everyone a really, really nice view here. So any discomfort, just let us know, please. No, oh, we're good. And the patient has a really, really, that's, um, you know, the nail's very dystrophic, it's discolored, it's lifted off the nail, bed a little bit, but there's no question that there's definitely an ingrown a piece of nail that's been really, really, it's actually more in the back here. How you doing there? Doing all right. Great. You know, this nail is very deteriorated. As everyone can see, there's probably also an element of fungus, but this is a problem back here. Okay. Look at this. You see? All of this. That's the problem. So what I like to do, it's even, it's been, the nail has adapted into the, into the skin. So we wanted to make it nice and straight. is just all sub what we call subungal debris just a lot of debris this is sorry about that a lot of just this is the nail bed the problem was actually right here where it was actually digging so I'd like to use first dry the entire nail fold, make it really, really nice and dry. Why do I like to do that? Because uh, the blood will quote unquote deactivate. Just relax. Perfect, thank you. The blood will deactivate the phenol. Okay, so let's get a, let's get a nice, Let's turn it this way, not the other way. Yeah, like that, just to get everyone. So it's nice and dry there, okay. And now, what I like to do as well, is we'll put a little antibiotic cream here as more as a protective barrier because phenol is an acid And we don't, we don't want to burn the surrounding skin, right? Some people use just some, uh, some gauze. Again, not one way to do this. So now we're going to go ahead. Just 
you know, we do three applications, 30 seconds each. She's got the watch. So we'll take a little bit of the, little bit of the feel here. Okay. And we just leave it like that. Some people like to kind of do this. The nail root is underneath all of this. Um, the antibiotic cream, proximal, underneath the proximal nail fold. Again, there's, we do three applications. At 30 seconds each. Again, this is the perfect, you know, indication in performing the procedure. A lot of people that come here the first time, you know, just because, uh, uh, you know, I don't like anything that's permanent in general, we give it, you know, we're a little bit more overzealous, over aggressive the first time around. And if for whatever reason, and I've said it before, the recurrence rate is so is so low, less than 5% of those patients that we perform the partial nail avulsions do not need this procedure performed. That's pretty low. There's no question that it's a great procedure for the right indication. You know, Dr. Kushner really likes this procedure a lot. Um, but I think that, you know, all surgeons have, you know, are not created equal and not all podiatrists are created equal. So now what we do is we make sure that everything is nice and clean, and it is. I'm going to take this opportunity to really, really trim this, to trim the toenail because the nail is completely detached. from the nail bed and I don't want the nail getting caught on like a sock or anything of that nature that's going to create more trauma. So the term subungual debris, I want to come around here. I want everyone to really see what I mean. All this. This is what I mean. All of this hay-like debris. We just want to remove all of this. See how it comes out? And that's probably all of this has been 
in there underneath the nail probably for a long time, right? So just trying to get a, as much as we can out. We're not hurting the patient, even though the patient is not, she, you know, we're really not. It just continues to. It's, it's probably been there for years, years and years. Clean it up really nice. These procedures really never get old. We'll just trim a little bit more and then we'll leave it like that for now. Just relax, there we go. Try to really contour the nail nicely. like to use alcohol, especially in the area, this area where we use the phenol, just to make sure if there's a little bit of the phenol that, that was either touched the skin by, by mistake or anything, it won't, it won't hurt the patient, right? a little bit. I'm going to show the public everything. Okay. Beautiful. So I want everyone to take a look. Okay. So we've remodeled a little bit of the nail plate remove some, uh, some of the subungal debris that uh, all the goo gook that was sitting underneath the nail. We performed the chemical phenol procedure for the chronic ingrown toenail. The patient's gonna be very, very happy. We were talking before we started the procedure and I disclosed to the patient that you know, there's always a very small chance, a percent, that the nail plate may possibly grow back and we're you know we're very transparent with all of our patients and we let them know that ahead of time because if it does happen then the patient is is well aware that we did discuss that in great length right Like always, www.jawspitidry.com, Instagram, Dr. Tojam, Jaws Pitidry, Facebook, and last but not least, our YouTube channel, Jaws Healthcare. Have a wonderful day, everyone.